Hi friends! This is Dainty Tank. Thank you for joining me again. This is Heart of the Woods. Uh, we're picking up right where we left off. Uh, because I actually didn't have to use as much of my brain um, <laughs> for the voice acting update, which is what this is. Poke the toad up to see part one. It's very important. It's really awesome. Um, and I'm enjoying this really <laughs> so far. So I hope you are too. Poke the Totoro, see it, come back, hang out again, do the thing, do the scribe, subscribe, uh, and we'll just kick it off. So last we left off, we met Tara and um, Tara and Maddie, who uh, kind of run this YouTube channel or something of the sort channel uh, with quarter million subs. Impressive numbers. <laughs> And, uh, it's Maddie's last time and last trip as part of the channel. Um, so they met their guide, Morgan, who uh, literally is about to just show them around using a horse-drawn carriage through the middle of nowhere for their show, Terra Normal, which is a spectacular name for a show. Like... Bravo. Alright. With that, let's just keep going. Morgan turns and deftly sweet, uh, swings up in their seat, taking hold of the reins. Tara finally manages to place her hands on the carriage and climb up to sit alongside her, shaking all the way. A sigh of relief and follow suit, mounting up next to Tara. It's a little cramped in here, but I'd feel weird just sitting by myself. Besides, not keeping an eye on Tara is a pretty guaranteed way to make it an even worse first impression. So, can you do any tricks in this thing? Barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> no, okay. The path of the cabin turns out to be a complicated one. We've been making twists and turns through the trees for a few minutes, but Morgan seems to know exactly where she's going. Not even the dark can stand in her way. You can navigate through all this with just that little lantern? How can you see landmarks? Don't worry, I know these woods better than just about anything. Besides, the moonlight is more than enough for me. Get it, Morgan. I can't help but feel embarrassed as I think about all the times I had to use a flashlight on my phone just to find something I dropped in the car. I definitely wouldn't last out here. Looking over, I can see Tara bouncing her leg, probably about to launch into a torrent of questions for Morgan. After that flubbed introduction, she's clearly a little less gung-ho than usual, but I know that won't stop her. As such, I, I should probably get my handling on the actual adult stuff out of the way quickly before it gets uh, lost in the noise. Is there anything about the town or the people that we should know? Local customs, things to avoid saying, that sort of thing? Morgan thinks about it for a moment. Silent. There's a curfew at midnight. Also, you're not supposed to go too far into the forest. I ignore both of those rules a lot. <laughs> Good, Morgan. Most of the villagers tend to be sticklers about them, though. Great, so our host is a troublemaker. I guess that means Tara will be in good company. So, while we're on our way, could you maybe tell us about some of the specific supernatural occurrences you've seen here so far? Here she goes. Morgan sits up at the question. She looks to over towards us, and her eyes seem to lose a bit of their constant drowsiness. She's been waiting for this. Well, we have a lot of freak weather events. Strange storms that appear and disappear, or are localized to certain parts of the forest in ways that shouldn't be possible. Tyrannette sol solemnly, already totally enraptured in what Morgan is saying. Sometimes when I walk in the woods, I can see strange lights here and there. Like tiny little stars inside the forest. I've never been able to get close to them, though. Are they the Will of the Wisps? I bet they're the Will of the Wisps. I raise an eyebrow, but don't say anything. We've had countless cases of strange lights before, all of which have ended with a rational explanation. That doesn't seem to damper Tara's spirits, though. Start to drift off. This is more Tara's jurisdiction anyway, so I'm sure they can just wake me up when we get there. There's also my cat. Ooh, cat. Your cat is a supernatural occurrence? <laughs> Shh. 
She can talk, so I'd say so. What? <laughs> I love the face. Great job, Maddie. Oh. Her words snapped me out of my trance. Looking over at her, I expect to see her holding a laugh or sporting some kind of mischievous grin, but her face is as serious as it's been since we arrived. Your cat can talk? Like, talk the way a human does? Ooh. Yes. She's very well spoken, in fact. <laughs> I tried to hide a sigh. Weird weather and lights in the woods are ambiguous enough that we can play along with them. But every so often we get some blatantly false uh, feet claims too, like a talking cat. Tara, however, instantly perks up at well, once her words sink in. She can actually believe her, right? She can't actually so, believe her. So, could we talk to her? She won't mind if I ask her a few questions, right? <laughs> I was hoping you'd ask. I think you'll be very interested in what she has to say. The whole thing is clearly some kind of, go of joke, but Tara is absolutely taken in. I can practically see the wheels turning in her head as she plans out her follow-up questions. That's never good. So, do you have any ideas about what could be causing it? Something in her diet, maybe? I don't think so. Have you been feeding her some kind of special Eisenfeld cat food? Can I try some? Oh my god, I love you. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough of that. When Tara starts talking about eating cat food, it's time for me to excuse <laughs> to exercise a little diplomacy and move the conversation forward. Crazy or not, I think we should move on. So, what kind of things does she talk to you about? Just about our lives for the most part. I figure you'd be better off hearing it from her rather than me. I'm sure that'll be illuminating. Oh, Maddie. I'll say. If there's <laughs> something that paranormal in the village itself, you must have seen way crazier stuff in these woods. She starts to gest uh, gesture as she talks, pointing back towards the uh, village, swinging her arms around as she mentions the, w the woods. <laughs> well, there's one pretty major thing, but you probably won't believe me. Oh? I wouldn't have come out here if I didn't believe you. Anything you have to say, I want to hear. I can't detect a hint of cynicism in her voice. Either she really believed this girl she just met has a talking cat, or she's giving a performance worthy of an Ox Oscar. Are you sure? 110%. Lay it on me. She winks at her and flashes her finger guns. <laughs> Back in celebrity mode. <laughs> Tara's good at recovery with these things. But I've never seen her recover on this level with such speed. But as I watch her lean in towards Morgan to make sure she catches her next statement, I realize another possible reason for her passionate response. If there's one thing she loves more than hearing strange stories, it's trying to impress a cute girl. Now things are starting to fall into place a bit more. Oh. Uh, well, one of the main reasons I called you out here is... I'm not sure if it has a name, but it's some kind of forest spirit. Forest spirit? Oh. Spirit? Like a ghost or something? No. Something physical. Some sort of massive creature. Like the forest came to life. Like the Heibai? From Avatar? Or the Great Forest Spirit? From Princess Mononoke? I vote Great Forest Spirit. Okay, this is new. Even the crazier fans don't get this outlandish. But Tara is absolutely eating it up. No matter what her reasoning is, I'm glad she's having a good time. Is there anything else you can tell me about it? Does it speak or anything? Have you managed to interact with it at all? Is it more kaiju-sized or more basketball player-sized? <laughs> I've only seen it once, unfortunately. So I don't know too much about it. I've searched for it a number of times since, but without any results. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe you two will have better luck than I have. That's what you're best at, isn't it? In terms of talents, I'd say it's certainly up there. Good job, Tara. Morgan's mouth turns into a small but seemingly genuine smile, and her expression grows slightly less intimidating. I knew you'd believe me. Nobody else around here does. Oh, make a big ol' smile. I can't imagine why. I felt a pang of guilt as that thought comes across my mind. As crazy as her story sounds, 
It can't possibly be easy feeling rejected in a community that's this isolated. No wonder she was so eager to bring us into the fold. So, um, how far away would you say we are from the cabin? We should be coming up on it any minute now. I'll help the two of you get situated and then head back. I'll be happy to tell you more about the spirit tomorrow. Okay. Thank goodness. Oh, yeah. Great. That's... great. I'm exhausted. That much is an ally. All I want to do right now is pass out. We passed the last of the houses that I can see, but the sparsely marked path continues on towards the forest. Last traces of civilization are behind us now. By any minute now? What exactly did you mean? I keep biting- I <laughs> keep- I can't keep the biting tone entirely out of my voice. Just ahead. See? She points into the darkness. I strain my eyes to see anything other than murk. Finally, I spot the faint outline of a small cabin, practically swallowed by the forest. I started the heater before I left to get you, so it should be warm. Nice. That's what I like to hear. You're like Prometheus. Oh my god, Prometheus. As soon as, I, as soon as Tara said that, I was sitting there like, where do I know that? Prometheus and Bob. From uh, the same thing that had the Action Squad. I forgot what it was, but it's 90s like cartoon. It's like cartoons with like action and like claymation and it was way back in the 90s whoa it's just brass blast from the past i'm surprised you know who that is <laughs> why i love that movie i don't know that movie i know nickelodeon morgan suddenly jerks the reins and the horses come to a stop tara and i are rattled from our seats and nearly fall forward damn it <laughs> darn what what happened Rather than answer, Morgan just glares into the darkness where the cabin is. I strain to see what she does as my heart starts to race. Is it a wild animal? A boar? Wolf? There is a sound of footsteps as a shadow detaches itself from the cabin and moves towards us. A human shadow. An older woman comes in view, stopping just the edge of the lantern's light. Ooh! Clearly related to Morgan. Her angular figures, uh, <laughs> features and steely eyes, barely visible in the dark, make her look like she stepped out of a Brock painting. Why are you here? Morgan? I came to greet our guests. Oh, animosity. Spits the word R, clearly asserting some sort of ownership. I suck in an involuntary breath as she approaches. Being able to see her clearly isn't reass isn't a reassurance. If anything, it's the opposite. Hmm. Something about her radiates hostility. Even the ho uh, the horses seem uncomfortable. Their ears press back as they stamp their feet in the snow. Up close, her gaze is sharp and fierce. Her face is proud but sunken. Cheekbones jutting as if her face doesn't quite fit. It makes her look older than she is. Which of you is Tara? Mouth drawn thin, she looks from me to Tara and then back again. Every second that passes makes the discomfort grow. I keep waiting for Morgan to intervene, but she doesn't. Tara and I exchange a quick nervous glance, then she clears her throat and leans forward, offering a handshake. That's me! The woman regards Tara's outstretched hand for a moment and ignores it. Welcome to Eisenfeld. My name is Evelyn, the mayor. Who are you? Eisenfeld. Evelyn? Okay. Her attention flicks to me like a hand on a clock. Um, I I'm Maddie. Madison. Tara's manager? That makes a lot more sense. I see. It's clear that she's judging us, though I have no idea on what. Are you done yet? They're tired. You can interrogate them later. Just what exactly is she volunteering us for? Interrogate is kind of a strong word. Our host makes absolutely no effort to disguise the loathing in her voice. In a town as small as this one, I can't imagine that speaking to someone as important as the mayor like that is a great idea. Though Evelyn appears entirely unfazed. 
She remains in the middle of the trail, blocking your path. She and Morgan stare each other down while Tara and I sit in painfully awkward, uh, uncomfortable silence. After at least a minute, the mayor finally steps out of the way and heads back up the way she came. We we'll can. speak later. Ooh, I am sorry, Morgan. It's clearly a command, not a request. The carriage sits immobile into the sound of Evelyn's footsteps are lost in the night. And even beyond that. So she seems nice. Her statement seems to snap Morgan back into the present. Morgan flicks the reins and we begin moving again. She turns around to face us, looking generally apathetic. <sighs> I'm so sorry about that. Apologetic. I thought she'd at least wait until tomorrow, and I'd have some time to prepare you beforehand. Hmm? Is she your mom? Technically. Oh. What? No way! How could you tell? Uh, the family resemblance? Morgan purses her lips. Unfortunate, isn't it? Long story short, I didn't tell her that you were going to be staying here until this morning. I'm speechless, hoping that it's just a joke and the punchline fell flat. But Morgan's clearly serious. For the second time in a handful of minutes, I'm wondering what we've gotten ourselves into. Tara laughs, though I can tell it's forced. Well, it's no big deal, right? It's not like she runs your life. Silence. Right? Eventually, Morgan nods. Right. We shouldn't get into it right now, though. I'm sure you'd rather sleep tonight. Oh, that, that could be taken two ways. Sure, you'd rather sleep as in just you're tired, or I'm sure you'd rather sleep tonight as in you would be horrified by her. Ooh. I can see Tara gathering the breath to disagree and tell Morgan that we'd love to hear all about her family issues right now, so I head her off. Yeah, we would. <laughs> Wherever family drama it is she's gotten us involved in, it can at least wait until I'm not about to pass out. Carriage comes to a stop just a few feet away from the door. A small stone path has the snow cleared away from it leads to a short flight of stairs. We're facing a large window, although it's dark and impossible to see into. Morgan vaults out of the carriage, nimbly landing on her feet. I'll unlock the door. Your luggage already came in too, so it's inside. Nice. Okay, Tora launches herself out of the carriage just like Morgan did, then she quickly scurries away from the patient horses, eyeing them for any sudden movement. I climb down as she stands an extremely safe distance away. I can't carry all of this on my own, you know. I toss her back and she lurches to catch it, barely keeping it from landing in the snow. We stand back and watch as Morgan fiddles endlessly with the lock on the door. Pushing and trying again, over and over. Now that we're so close to the end, I can feel the last of my reserves and my energy rapidly draining. The bags of my arm feel like they weigh a million pounds. So, what do you think? She mutters as quietly as she can, though her timing can't be worse. I think I want to go to bed. Same as ever, then. <laughs> you know me. Rubbing my arms, I peer into the forest. Just beyond the first few lines of trees, everything fades into an inky blackness, thick and impenetrable. I love the art here, though. Like this, like, faint, almost watercolor-ish tree line. It's really cool. I shiver, and not entirely because of the cold. A cold breeze rattles the empty bra branches as they scrape against each other, mimicking the way I'm trying to stay warm. Finally, there's a banging sound, as Morgan solves the mystery of the lock and nearly falls through the door. She pokes her head back, though, like nothing happened. I got it open. <laughs> Good. Hallelujah. I hauled my way inside and into the blessed warmth. Ugh. It hurts me physically to say that word. It's been so long since we've been anywhere near a working heater. <laughs> a small lamp on the side table casts a little bit of light over the small room. That's a really beautiful, like, cottage. Ooh, ooh, oh, look, look at that clock. Ooh, 
in the table. I like that type of like circular table when the wind inlays. That's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna stop geeking out. But the sky! Stars! Our luggage, as promised, is scattered haphazardly about the living room, just like our home. Tara slips past me to bounce around and examine all her bags hold as care carelessly as I pulled them out of the car edge. Oh my god! Oh god. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool! <laughs> oh, there's nothing really out of the ordinary, so I just stand there and wait for her to get out all of out of all of it out of her system. I, I can't blame her. I literally just took like 30 seconds to do the same thing. Oh, look at the lamp. Isn't this the coolest? It's like staying in a history museum. Oh, yes. That's the kind of thing you'd usually treat like a punishment. Are you kidding me? I love history. We even did that whole series on the history of cryptids in the American Midwest. <laughs> and I spent like three months on that special about Bigfoot's impact on the Great Depression. What? That's one of my favorite episodes. I had never heard of the theory that FDR was a cousin of Sasquatch. <laughs> to be fair, I don't think FDR did either. Morgan laughs and I just roll my eyes. I mean the kind of history that actually happened. History is doomed to repeat itself, Mads. I can't even respond. The whole episode felt like a plot of an awful low-budget B-movie. Though I crossed the living room across a tiny hallway with a pair of identical doors. These are the bedrooms? That's right. They're the same size, so there's not much of a difference. Neat. Guess I'll take this one then. I open... I push open the closer door. Inside is just four walls with a bed, a shelf, and a small dresser. Drop my bag on the floor and roll my suitcases in. Tara lingers in the living room, talking about the features of the cabin with Morgan. Suddenly, I hear a yelp of pain or horror. I rush out, knocking over my suitcase and nearly slamming into the door as I go. I have to expect to see Morgan holding a bloody knife or something, but instead, Tara is just holding her phone. What happened? A tragedy. Actually, worse. The apocalypse. Check out your phone. No, no signal. I do so, expecting a news article or alert or something, but there's nothing. What? I, I don't have anything. Exactly. No service out here. I checked. Sure enough, she's right. It isn't the barest trace of signal at all. What about Wi-Fi? I, uh, I assume we have that, right? Technically. Uh... Oh no. Stocked up on books and downloaded a bunch of new films before we left since I wasn't expecting to have much connection out here anyway. But I'm willing to bet the thought never even crossed Tara's mind. Good thing I packed a few books I think she'll like too. Tara glumly pockets her phone again as Morgan gives a small smile. Let me give you the quick tour. Cool. I don't think she's entirely necessary since we can see everything ourselves, but I don't stop her. This is the kitchen. There's a stove and an oven. The stove is somewhat picky and doesn't always like to work. Actually, I guess it's the same for the oven. Okay. Don't worry. I don't know how to cook anyway. <laughs> Great job, Tara. You've got this. Over here is the fireplace. I can show you how to chop firewood sometime if you'd like. Oh, that's very helpful. I think I might pass on that one. This is the couch. You can also sleep on it if you'd like. It doesn't unfold into a bed or anything, but I sometimes come here and sleep on it anyway. Hmm. That doesn't even surprise me. The Wi-Fi password is on a note by the phone. So is my phone number, so you can reach me anytime. Do you have any questions? How are you supposed to call if you don't have any signal? Oh, there's a telephone. Landline. It's been forever since I've had a landline. I shake my head and looked at Tara, who does the same. I think we're good. Thanks for all your help tonight, Morgan. It was my pleasure. Again, I can't thank you enough for coming all the way out here. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Awesome. I'm sure. Can't wait to get started. Get it. Me either. 
but I should probably be going for tonight. I've kept you up long enough as it is. She heads out the front door, waving goodbye. Bye. Night, Morgan. Thanks again. Ah, oh, I love Tara. Good night. <laughs> Through the large window, we can see as she starts to make her way down the path. I'm gonna go to bed, too. Deal. Yeah. Yeah, same. We switch up the lamp as we head to our respective rooms. Tara grabs her bags from the floor where she tossed them. Alright, see you in the morning then? Yeah. Yeah, night. I shut the door behind me. And so does, and she does the same. I squeal like a zombie as I stalk towards bed. It takes the last of my strength to dig my pajamas out of my suitcase and change. There's a window here that looks straight out into the forest. The first thing I do is pull the curtain shut. Going into bed, I face away from the window and pull the blanket up to my chin. It's heavy and warm and I wrap it around myself like a burrito. The bed is firmer than I'm used to. In the pillow, thinner. There are like three of the blankets though, so I ball one of them up and use it as a second pillow. As I try to get comfortable, my thoughts start to drift off. The detached part of me is glad that the timing worked out well enough to avoid jet lag. And in all, aside from the Wi-Fi, this is pretty nice as far as accommodations go, especially since we're not paying for it. It seems strange that Morgan would come all the way out here just to take naps sometimes, but I can already tell that most of what Morgan does would be considered strange. Strange but harmless, I don't mind. But when I think of her mother, the mare, the chill runs down my spine, and I bundle myself even more tightly in the blankets. I should give her a second chance, though. Especially if I don't have any warning about her, our arrival. Especially if she didn't have any warning about our arrival. Sans reason that she'd be annoyed at Morgan renting out her family's cabin like that. When I think of it that way, her reaction seems pretty justified. I'll just be extra polite to her next time we meet. Hopefully it isn't an interrogation like Morgan said. That would probably just her being dramatic. No. Probably not. I w yawn, wishing sleep would come faster. I expect to be out before my head hit, even hit the pillow, not lying here with my head thoughts racing. Try to block out everything and focus on my breathing. In. Out. In. Out. In. A loud tap 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 on the window cuts through my silence. My heart leaps to my throat as I bolt upright in bed. I get tangled out of the um, on the blankets, scrambling to haul them off me. With hand, I desperately feel for my glasses nearby. Finally, I find them and shove them onto my face, nearly jabbing my eye out. With horror, I look at the window. The one that made me uncomfortable from the start. Oh, God. Morgan. Like, I knew there was going to be something in the window, but like... <laughs> Land her head, fist raised against the glass. She stands there patiently, as if she knows what kind of emotional roller coaster she just put me through. She doesn't show it. Shakily, I walk over the window, not even switching on the lamp. With some difficulty, I wrench it open, disturbing a small amount of snow. Yes? It's the best I can ma manage anything lo longer, and I'm not sure I can keep it simple. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. Please be ready to go by eight, and I'll come pick you up. I just blink, unable to comprehend what I'm hearing. Is that okay? We could make it 8.30, but no later. Okay. Why? Oh, hold on. No, no. Eight is fine. Is that all? That's right. Have a good night. Oh my god, Morgan. Sorry if I disturbed you. I slammed the window shut and hobbled back to bed. She doubled back in the snow and scared the hell out of me for that. Check the time on my phone. It's nearly midnight. Eight hours to sleep. Don't be ready to go. It's going to be a long month, isn't it? What? Huh, what? It's eight hours and 34 minutes later. I know, beef, because telling time is my phone's only remaining function. Yet yeah, I can still check it constantly, like something might change. True to her word, Morgan was there to pick us up right at eight. In a mi uh, minor miracle that Tara and I were both ready to go. I don't know who had it worse. Me waking up to my alarm, or Tara waking up to me banging on her door. Even now, she slowly eats a piece of bread from the kitchen, looking for all the world like a cow chewing cod. With each bump, 
The carriage hits. My tiny cup of coffee threatens to spill into my hand. I'm not sure that I'd feel it. After answering Morgan's perfunctory questions about our first night, we spent the rest of the ride in silence. She didn't acknowledge at all how she had knocked on my window. Apparently, I wasn't remarkable enough to her to deserve another uh, mention. I watched from over her shoulder now as we approached the town. From the train last night, the scattered lights made Ensfield appear to be a lot larger than it really is. Now in the daylight, I have to strain my eyes to pick out some of the buildings against the hills and snow. Tara's missing it all, staring at our feet. Crumbs litter the floor beneath her. Morgan guides us along the path that I'm pretty sure is the same one as last night. A few villagers move out of the way as our carriage. Not even turning to look. Must be regular occurrence. Even though it's hard for anybody to see us in here, I feel self-conscious. I clutch the bag of camera gear tighter to my chest, hiding myself beside it, behind it. There aren't any other characters on the road, nor anything bigger than a pushcart, so we still stand out, at least in my head. If the situation is at all awkward or out of the ordinary to Morgan, she doesn't show it. She pulls the rein, and the carriage comes to a stop in the road. There aren't as many other people up here, but a few there are give us a wide berth. And here we are. Okay. Ooh. Oh, look at that stained glass. Oh, and these doors. <gasps> this is so cute. Oh my god. It takes her a moment to realize that we've made an entrance, but as soon as she does, she's in showbiz mode. She leaps to her feet, throwing off the exhaustion like a uh, disguise. Here we are indeed. Yes, indeed. Gay finger guns. She vaults out of the carriage, spinning circles like we're in the middle of a grand plaza instead of in the middle of a street. Climb out more carefully, and then scurry out of the way. Okay, this rules. Yeah, it kinda does. Really does look like we've traveled back in time. The building's all built from wood and stone. Look like they've been there for centuries. Okay, though. I am going to pause before we get into more of the village. Uh... Definitely enjoying this so far. I really think that this is going to be interesting. Thank you all for coming. Do the subscribe and the things and the stuff. And, you know, I hope you're enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. Um, and the voice acting is fun. <laughs> but, oh man, Morgan. Give me a heart attack. <laughs> but this is so pretty. Look, look how pretty it is. It's stunningly pretty. Oh my god. Okay. With that, I love you all. Stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye!